The objective is to multiply multiples of 10, 100, and 1,000 by single digits, recognizing patterns. Let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of problems here. Here we have two ones times four, and then we also have two tens times four. And let's see how it is that these problems differ. First off, let's go ahead and show two ones times four within our place value chart. Making sure to circle each group of two ones. So there's one a group of two ones, two, three, and four. So that two ones times four does equal two, four, six, eight. Eight ones. When we look at 2 tenths times 4, and we model that within our place value chart, here's 2 tenths there, but it's 2 tenths four times 4. That's 2 of them, and it's 3 of them, and that is 4 of them. 2 tenths. 1, 2, 3, times 4, which is equal to 2, 4, 6, 8, or 8 tenths. Do you notice anything that comparing these two multiplication problems where we're multiplying 2 1's times 4? or 2 tens times 4? What do you notice about the number of place value disks that we used within there? They're the same. How many times larger is this one here than the first problem? Right, 10 times larger. What would happen if we go two hundreds times four. What would happen if we went two hundreds times four? Did you think that we would get eight hundreds? What do we write eight hundreds as in standard form? All right, it's equal to eight hundred. What do you notice about each of these problems that set up here? We're working in unit form. Did you state that 7 is a factor in each of the problems? The other thing that you might have noticed is that the units are in order, where we have 1s then tens, then hundreds, then thousands. Will the answer change as we go from each of those problems? Seven times two is 14, so seven times two ones is 14 ones. Let's see what happens when we go seven times two tens. Seven times two tens, we still have 14, but in this case we have 14 what? Tens. Seven times two hundreds, can you finish this pattern? It's 14 what? Hundreds. And seven times two thousands is fourteen thousands. Where we have those answers expressed in unit form. What we could have done 
is we could have rewritten 7 times 2 thousands as 7 times 2 times 1 thousand. 7 times 2 is 14 times 1 thousand is 14 thousands. And of course, we could have done something similar to these other problems as well. Let's show these two problems within place value chart. Here we have 8 hundredths times 2, and then here we have 8 times 2 hundredths. What we'll do is we'll model this portion here, portion that is in unit form, 8 hundredths, and it says times 2. Let's see what that looks like. So I have 8 hundredths, okay. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And I will group that together. That's 8 hundredths up, but it says times 2. All right, so I can make another group of 8. How many is that all together? That's 8, 16, or 16 hundredths. Let's write that out. 16 hundredths, right? And 16 hundredths is equal to 1,600. When I have 8 times 2 hundredths, let's see how that looks. I'll start with the 2 hundredths, right? So we have 1 and 2, and I will circle that. But this time, it says, hey, there's 8 of those. So I'm multiplying by 8. Seven and eight. Count with me. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen. It's counting by twos there. Or sixteen hundreds, or eight times two hundreds does equal sixteen hundreds. And sixteen hundreds, just as before, equals one thousand six hundred. So there is a difference in between 8 hundreds times 2 and 8 times 2 hundreds in that they are shown in a different manner within the placed value charts. Even though, if we were to evaluate them, they would still be worth the same amount, 16 hundreds, or written as 1600, 1600. Let's see how multiplication works when it is that we are dealing with a word problem. Here we have Francisco played a video game and earned 60 points for every coin he collects. He collected 5 coins. How many points did he earn? Let's write out a focused answer so. Francisco earned blank points. And then so we have this here where he earns 60 points for every coin he collects. And we know that he collected 5 coins. So let's draw a tape diagram. And the tape diagram, the whole tape diagram, is going to represent what we're solving for or the number of points that Francisco earns. Says, hey, that he collected five coins and each of the coins was worth 60 points. Hmm. So we're going to divide and separate the bar into five pieces to represent the five coins that he collected. And each of these pieces here and parts of the bar here are worth 60. So for each coin and each unit here, it's worth 60. So there's 60 or 60 times 5. 60 points times 5. Do you see that we have five sixties here? 
60 times 5 can be expressed as 6 times 5 times 10. We can decompose it like that. 6 times 5 is 30, and we have 30 times 10. Francisco earns 300 points. So, this is how we can show multiplication there. If we wrote in each of those 60s, maybe you'd be able to see that a little more clearly. So we have 60, 120, 180, 240, 300. 300 or 300 points. And remember what we had separated the bar into five parts because there were five coins that were collected. So for the first coin, yeah, he could get 60 points. Second coin collected, oh yeah, he has 120 points total now. And we can express that repeated addition of the 60 by going 60 times 5. We will continue to work on different types of word problems that involve multiplication, thinking about how we can set them up, and of course, working through our solutions.